about the helium. Sir. Picture yourself in a situation on. like this a few years after your graduation from college. For the moment, gentlemen, let's forget the helium, the argon, the neon, the inert gases. Our company is primarily interested in the principal elements of the atmosphere. The 79% nitrogen, the 21% oxygen. So, can you create for us a process that will separate 15 tons of air every hour in such a way that out of every ton, 79 parts will be pure nitrogen, 21 parts are oxygen? Okay, now picture yourself in another kind of situation. In connection with the possibility of growing crops, grain, fruit trees, and so on, in wasteland like this, we're asking you back home to develop a synthetic material to do the job. We'll need it as soon as possible in commercial quantity, and it'll have to sell at a figure the folks out here can afford to pay. Or would you like to be deep in a project like this one? Maybe actually head up that project. The concept of four-man space station. Our new contract requires us to create a life support system for such a vehicle based upon a power plant capable of supplying that station and those who live on it for weeks at a time, one of you fellows perhaps, one of them perhaps me, with continuous energy for five years, ten years. A power plant which will push the vehicle beyond orbit, yet be compact in size and in weight. From where will a plant get its power? How can we create continuous energy? Such questions, such problems, are fundamental to the profession of chemical engineering. This picture is about that profession and those who practice it. to start telling you something of chemical engineering is to remind you of what chemistry is. Chemistry is working in a lab with small quantities of chemicals, moved, measured, mixed by hand. Chemistry uses tabletop apparatus, usually glass, to explore the basic conditions of a chemical reaction. The chemist is not concerned with efficient procedure. He is not concerned with costs and profits. What he principally wants to know is, does the reaction go? Will it work? When his studies are through, he has a sample of something, something better, or something that never existed before. A new kind of synthetic rubber, say, but only a sample of it, a small quantity. Like chemistry, Chemical engineering starts in the lab and then goes far beyond the lab. Chemical engineering is taking lab equipment and scaling it up so that it produces massive quantities of useful product. Chemical engineering is big concepts, big processes, maintained and controlled over days in time. Sometimes over miles in distance. The apparatus of chemical engineering is big, precision built, designed by the chem engineer himself, and motor power moves it. Apparatus that encloses tremendous chemical reactions. Reactions, many of them, involving tremendous pressures, tremendous extremes of temperature. The giant reactions of chemical engineering can extend through an entire plant. So, when the chem engineer designs the plant, which he does, and when he runs it, which he does, he must make sure it is so designed and his technicians so operated that people are safe in the surrounding community 
in the plant itself. The person is to enter any barricade unless all vessels and process lines have been vented and flushed to the atmosphere with nitrogen. Use of an aluminum protective suit will be required. The chem engineer thinks in terms of efficiency, of costs, and of profits and of output. And that output is a continuous output comprising the many, many chemicals, almost without number, on which modern civilization depends. The raw materials and the converted raw materials of the earth and of the atmosphere, solids, liquids, gases. It comprises the basic industrial chemicals made from such converted raw materials. And it comprises the new products and the improved products made from industrial chemicals and through chemical processes. The processes of chem engineering make possible the seemingly impossible. Separation of the components of the air, for instance, on demand in any specified quantity, as in this plant which provides a huge steel plant with high pressure oxygen. Oxygen that speeds up the change of molten iron into steel of highest quality. Chem engineering can now produce from petroleum chemical mulch which holds moisture even in arid soil. Result? Crops grow more abundantly, can grow even where none grew before. Chem engineers seeking compact power for space travel teamed up with other of America's top technical personnel and through MHD, Magneto Hydrodynamics, obtained electricity directly from a heat source. When a plasma consisting of high temperature gases containing ions and electrons is made to race through a strong magnetic field, it produces current just as copper wires produce current in a generator. Without the chemical engineer, space vehicles would remain earthbound. The chem engineer supplies the exotic fuels that energize rockets and missiles, the less exotic ones that move our boats and cars. His engineering enables chemicals to create horsepower. It packages all sorts of power for us. It produces synthetically what once only nature could produce, the rubber these workmen are removing from a mold. The materials that clothe us, and those that make footwear and footballs and soccer balls. Chem engineering produces film that records life. Pharmaceuticals that prolong life. Chem engineering transforms coal into medicine. Stone and rock into glass. Farm crops into antibiotics. It fortifies and freezes our food. From it come our soaps and detergents, our paints and plastics, all the new textiles, the sprays and repellents. Materials that make the attractive even more attractive. And materials that protect against humidity and against heat and against cold. All of these things and practically everything else we can see or touch are the achievements of chemical engineering. And chemical engineering is the chemical engineer, a man, sometimes a woman. Invariably though, a special kind of human being whose special kind of thinking results from his professional education and training. Education and training that reward him in many ways and through what he creates, the plants, the processes, the products, benefit all the peoples of the earth. If you, a boy or girl in school today, were attracted to science, how could you tell whether you'd be successful in a scientific field so much broader than conventional lab chemistry? Well, here are some indications. A future chem engineer might mix a solution to go into, say, an automobile engine. But the automobile involved need not necessarily be his. People ask him to do things for them, to make things that make other things work better. 
a combustion chamber, a motor fuel, anything. And what he makes does what it was intended to do. The future chem engineer maintains good scholastic averages. He organizes his assignments, his thinking. Such a youngster wants to know why when troubles develop and can improvise ways to remedy those troubles. Uh-huh, oven's not level by this much. When such a youngster builds things, he does more than what's required. He's imaginative, a glider, a plane. Can they be linked up? Can the plane tow the glider? Well, let's see. who's likely to enjoy chemical engineering and be successful at it, has probably shown early interest in things like these. Challenges like these. Abstract concepts for him offer no particular problems, and he can explain them clearly to others. Though he's a team player, he expects always to retain his individuality which he will if he becomes a chemical engineer. It's that kind of profession. Colleges of chemical engineering, like medical schools, like law schools, like the service academies, have high academic standards. Admission is not for everyone, but those who qualify should do well if they utilize the good study methods they've been taught in secondary school. Away from his desk, the student translates classic scientific theory into action. This glassware encloses a separation process, which simply means removing chemicals from liquids, gases, and solids. When scaled up, such processes are the heart of chemical engineering. To scale up anything, you use mathematics, that important tool of chemical engineering. And you check your calculations on a computer because what you're preparing to build means the expenditure, even in college, of appreciable time and money. If you've made a mistake, it's best to discover that mistake before you go on, as you will, to process design, to plant design, to constructing and operating the plant itself, your group's practical application of separation phenomena, which this is first observed through glass in a lab. Other phenomena, other courses, suggest what research and development can mean. As the student investigates reaction kinetics, the magic that heat performs, he learns how to link molecules together to create polymers, new kinds of molecules. He learns how to make them go places and do things. And moving a molecule from point A to point B constitutes no trivial problem. But problems which formerly might have taken a lifetime to solve can be solved in minutes thanks to the student's newly acquired ability to program today's superb digital computers. Through such developing technologies, the student moves the molecules. He learns how other technologies make possible the control of intricate production processes, improve plant operations, thereby creating profits which finance the research out of which come tomorrow's products, ever higher standards of living. He frequently encounters tomorrow's science headline in today's class. And so, gentlemen, we see that the plasma jet is another engineering device of aid to chemical engineers. It can be used, for example, as a thrust in rocket engines. It is also useful for high temperature cutting. But of most important... New concepts quickly become his to ponder upon and to utilize. 
make the laser an unique tool for the chemical engineer. Not only for the study of chemical reactions, but also as a potential means of triggering highly specific reactions for commercial production. He utilizes such exotic tangibles as the elements uranium-235, plutonium-239. He begins to understand what radioactivity can achieve for him and for society. When he manipulates his materials in a radiation chamber, he enters a fantastic new world. As his familiarity with chemistry and physics increases, he'll proceed further into that world. Still in college, he could become known as one of its explorers. Still in college, and a chem engineer can look forward to this all his life, opportunities will come to him. Opportunities which he will know how to grasp. Opportunities in industry whose representatives during the months before his graduation will visit his college, interview him. Mr. Miller, I understand that you're primarily interested in research and development. That's right, sir, I am. Now, as you probably know, I am also involved in the research and development area and we're interested in a particularly bright... Young He'll be asked what he's looking for, technically, geographically, and usually he can find it. I'm particularly interested in practical experimentation, sir. Well, we have a great many programs in process improvement which require uh, young men in the uh, pilot plant uh, areas. And here are interested in uh, people who have an ability in mathematics, have the adaptability to work with equipment in a pilot plant environment, get along with other engineers. A man with a chemical engineering degree is sought after on many levels. And professionally, He'll continue to be sought after as an increasing world population increases its demands on chem engineering for ever larger quantities, for better products, better quality. Chemical engineering is vital to national security, but it's one technological discipline not dependent on armaments, on weapons. which means that in any kind of economy, the salary of the chemical engineer mounts ever higher as he goes forward in his dynamic profession. The chemical engineer is a bridge between science and business. He thinks like a scientist and like a corporation executive. He's trained that way. Whether concerned with people, cash, chemicals, his company's fortunes and his own are interlocked. Interlocked as he makes possible, with draftsmen as always executing his ideas, more efficient operation of existing plants. Interlocked in the selling of chemicals, of chemical products, of big chemical equipment. These are areas of engineering where the mutual rewards can be considerable. Interlocked in the creation of new plants all over the world with the chem engineer on the scene, telling the businessman, yes, it's practical to invest here. It's practical to build here. Telling the businessman how much the completed plant will cost and how much money the plant should make. And the businessman relies on the chemical engineer's answers, answers that for both have a high market value. How do such extensive enterprises begin? As simply as this, a formula. A small amount of material. A liquid which after exposure to heat becomes a strip of solid film. Then someone's belief that these few square inches can be transformed into a continuous flow of product people need and will buy if the chem engineer can work out the problems. The chemist said, if you put A and B and C together, you'll get D. Chemical engineers want to know much more. How are we going to be able to put them together most efficiently? What should the capacity be for each production line? How are we going to control the temperature of the autoclave where the polymer is made? How shall we control color? And then, 
As you see here, gentlemen, we have... A presentation to company brass. ...in our economic analysis of our new product. Now, what I'd like to go into is the cost of the sales plus 10% return on our new product. And when all the factors have been evaluated, this letter a chemical engineer makes the command decision. In view of the positive nature of the data and recommendations that you have submitted, I authorize you to proceed with the design of the commercial plan. Please expedite matters so that we will have a construction cost estimate. The pilot plant is the first manufacturing process. Chem engineers design it, build it. A pilot plant, as its name implies, is one that leads the way turning out small but continuous quantities of material, it gives chemical engineers the practical information they need before they scale up to full size. This modest forerunner of what will come can indicate potential manufacturing problems and assure their economical solution. Meanwhile, other chem engineers work with miniature models of what's coming, so they may anticipate problems involving flow of fluids, waste disposal, danger, location of equipment. And eventually, the full-size plant. As the chem engineer in charge of its construction, you also start up the manufacturing process, which technicians operate to specifications set forth by a chem engineer. The process in the plant will begin with the large extruder. Temperature control will be accomplished with control valves, which will mix cool and hot oil. To achieve proper temperature control, the elbow will be similarly temperature controlled. For the extruder and associated units, there has been provided a scale-up using different speeds and depth ratio. As the film enters the machine direction unit, it will contain several impurities which will be removed in the operation and the film will emerge for final winding. Finished rolls will be removed from the wind-up by means of an overhead hoist and monorail system. Specifications covering the complete functioning of a one-of-a-kind, completely controlled, fascinatingly intricate chemical process which chemical engineering and chemical engineers develop through thinking and planning like this. From beginnings like this. And from this. Chemical engineering goes beyond the lab in many directions. For the qualified young person, it can open many doors, and not all of them need be those of big chemical or industrial corporations. Many chem engineers are independent consultants to industry. Many teach chem engineering in universities. Many a young man heads up his own company. But no matter what, from the time he starts practice, the chem engineer has enviable status in business, in his community. And he can expect an income to go with that status. An income assuring the kind of life most of us wish for ourselves and those close to us. Outsiders, and rightly so, view the versatile chem engineer as being constantly called on at home and away to deal with ever more provocative challenges. Here are some just over the horizon waiting for, well, who knows, to come up with the answers. The energy of the sun. Who will discover an effective means of harnessing that energy? From these four basic chemicals, an expedition living on the moon can manufacture its own balanced daily diet. Where is the person who will devise a practical way of producing such synthetic food? How can we get electricity direct from the atom without going through the thermal cycle? Who will come up with the magic formula? In the fields of radio, television, weather control, who will contribute to the next advances? We are now purifying seawater, separating it into a number of its components. We remove the salt. We capture the bromine and magnesium. It is also possible to produce gold from seawater. Who, one of these days, will show us how to produce that gold in quantity and at a price? 
Do such challenges intrigue you? Are you undecided, like many others, about where you want to be 10 years from now? Do you like science? Are you perhaps thinking of physics, of chemistry, of the older engineering disciplines? Well, they're all involved in chemical engineering. If you choose to go into chemical engineering, you'll not be abandoning your present interests. You'll be enlarging upon them. You'll be learning more about your favorite subjects, utilizing all of your talents so that later they can be the prime tools of your profession. When you're a chemical engineer, you know a great deal about a great many things, and the world you serve so well will serve you well in return.